Microsoft have released a brand new slicer in the October release of Power BI. So that's three slicers now. We have the original slicer, slicer new, and this new slicer called list slicer. Well, in this video, you will learn how to use this new slicer by recreating these three designs. And the third one is super interesting where we actually build a toggle function using Figma, really simple to do, no coding required, and then we'll put that into our slicer as well. So without further ado, let's start this lesson. So to actually use the new list slicer, we have to enable that in our preview features. So by going to file, options, preview, and enabling the list slicer, you can now begin to use it. So let's learn how to use a new list slicer by recreating the different styles. So if you've turned on the preview feature, you'll see the new list slicer appear in your visualizations. So let's bring that in. We can now bring in our columns. So over here we have one group and then groups below. So by selecting our first level in our hierarchy and then another, we can then include chevrons where we can expand. And you can do that as many times as you want. Uh, it will just keep, keep on expanding. The next thing we want to do is turn off single select because right now it's circles and we can only select one item at a time. That's not good. We want to have multiple selections. So by going to the format section and then slicer settings and then turning off single select, we now have checkboxes. Something to note about the new list slicer, it's not dynamic where it will increase the number of roles or visuals that you actually see in the slicer. You have to specify that in layout. So if we want to increase the number of buttons, we go to layout and then increase the amount. And as you can see, it will maintain that amount throughout our visual and the size that we have. We can adjust the spacing of our cards so that they're a bit closer together by once again going to layout and then reducing the space and that will make this gap a lot smaller. So now we have to understand the concept of state. So right now we are in a default state where nothing is selected and in our example here we have some selections and those selections are blue. So how do we now change how our visual looks in different states? So by going to format and let's use buttons for example we can see our different state options here. So let's go to default. And in our normal state, we don't want a border. So if we turn that off, in default, there won't be a border. In hover, it's off as well. Press, selected, so it's off. So we've turned off our border in our normal state. The next thing we want to do is look at the fill. So when we make a selection, we don't want it to go black. We want it to be a blue. So by moving from default to selected, so this is once we make a selection, we want our fill to be a blue. So we now have a blue when we make our selection. So let's go back to our selections now. We can see our selections, they're showing as white instead of having a red icon. Well, we can adjust that by going to our selection icon and then in the selected state, we want that to be red. So select the new card visual, selected in our selection icons and then turn that to red. And the same thing we can do um, for our chevrons where they're black right now, so if we go to expand and collapse icon, select selected, and we want that to be a dark black. And the size of our chevrons is slightly too large. So let's make them smaller. So we can expand that by going to layout and then um, going to the size and making that smaller. So this is in our selected state. Let's make that 15. And let's go smaller. Let's go 14. And then in our default state, we want that to be 14 as well. And then hover state 14. So now we can look at our accent bar, which is dynamic when we make a selection. So to do that, what we can do is go to buttons in our default state. We want the accent bar on as a gray. And then in our selected state, we want that to be a dark blue. And then if we turn off the turn, increase the thickness, when we make that selection, we can see it gets bigger. I want to actually make that slightly bigger. So let's do that as five. And then in our default, let's make that three. So we now have the option to change our state and it changes the accent bar as well. So we're looking a lot closer to what we had initially. But if we see our text, it's going white instead of it being darker when we actually make that selection. So for our actual text in our card, what we need to do is go to uh, call out values. In our default state, we want that to be a gray. And then in our selected state, we want that to be a darker black. So now when we make our selections, we can see it's going black. And when it's not selected, it's a lighter gray. So if we expand that, we can see our selections. Now we can play around with the indentation. So what that means is in our hierarchy, when we expand, we might want there to be a bigger gap. 
Then to do that, if we go to layout and then go to our indentation, we can adjust how that looks as well. So that's just a top tip as well. Now for the sake of consistency, we can see that this is a lot smaller. So to address that, if we go to layout and then increase the amount of buttons shown, we can probably get that looking a lot closer. And then if we go to buttons and then change our selected state to uh, our fill to be a lot more transparent, we can get that to align much better. So that's how we create our first uh, slicer type. So looking back at our overview, we've now recreated our slicer type one. So let's move on to style two. We can see it's very different where our selections are a lot more obvious. And when we hover over our items, it's not the background fill that's changing. We can see our actual icons changing to prompt you to make that selection. So how do we go about creating this? So once again, let's create a new slicer. So we're going to use the list slicer and then bring in our column. So we've got our primary genre. So the first thing that we need to look at is our selection. So right now we can only select one when in fact we want multi-select on. So by selecting our new slicer, going to format and then slicer setting, we can turn off single select. So that will bring back our checkbox. So now let's look at how many cards we actually have. So in our style here, we have a lot more options. So if we go over to layout and then increase the amount of buttons shown, so I'm going to select eight, we now have more buttons in our visual. Let's now look at our selections and when we make them, we want that to go green. So if we go to buttons and then selected and then for our fill, we want that to be a green and the color code, let me bring that up. You can see that below. So when we make our selection now, that will turn to green. Moving on to the checkboxes, we now need to go to our selection icon and then in the selected state, we want that to be the green. So we can leave that as is or we can leave it as white. But in our default state, we want that to be a red. And in our hover state, we want to make that turn to that green as well. So when we hover, it's very obvious. And if we look at us, so there also seems to be a border when we make a selection. So if we go back to our buttons and then go to selected and then border, we can turn that on. And then let's turn the transparency down and then we can make that align. So we now have visual type two where the selections are a lot more obvious. So let's move on to style three. Now this is very different in terms of how it's set up where we have to use Figma. Now that's a completely free tool and it's actually really simple to make these different states. So let's head over to Figma. And once you've created your account, you can click new design file. And what we want to do is create three shapes. So if we do a rectangle, so this is our first background, but then we want another rectangle, which is smaller. So for this, for the actual toggle, and then we want a circle. So we have our three shapes there. Let's start off with our first rectangle. So we want the width to be 518 and then for our height, let's set this to 70. And then we want this color to be our default state. So let's use a very uh, light blue. Now our second shape, we can now overlay this within and for our second shape, we can do this to 30. And we also want a color for this. So in our default state, we want this to be a darker blue. And then for our circle, we can bring that on top, adjust it so it fits into the space. And then we want that to be a white. So we have our first state. Now what we can do is export them. So by selecting this shift and then the other ones, you can right click flatten. And if we scroll to the bottom and export, we have our shape saved. And now what you can do is create your other states by undoing that. So undo your last steps, move this button across, move that across. And then for our background, we might want that to turn into the green. So that's a greeny blue. So now we have our second state. If we select all of them by holding shift, flatten, export, we now have our two shapes. So let's now bring them into Power BI and create our slicer. So let's create a list slicer, bring in our genres. And then if we go immediately to our buttons in our default state, we want no border. And if we set the fill to our image, so let's get our image. So this is our default state image fit. We want to set the fill and we need to set our transparency to zero 
and we now have our first state. And now if we do the same for our selected state, so this is when we select the button, it changes the toggle. So if we select the other image that we created, image uh, fit set to fill. And now when we select our button, it will change the state. But we can see that our selection icon is overlapping. Well, first of all, I haven't turned single select off, so we've got checkboxes. But now that I've turned that off, so what we want to do is go to our selection icon, go to our default state, set the transparency to 100%. For our selected state, we want the same, and then our hover. So now we don't have that overlapping. So your toggle might be overlaying your text, but this is where you have to adjust your visual size where you can make it fit. Now you might have to play around in Figma a bit just to get the right size visual for yourself. So you might have to adjust the height and width of the button. But generally, what I gave as dimension works, and then from there, it might be some minor modification. So we've got the two states working, and if you want to create a middle state, you can by um, just moving that button in Figma to the center. But let's ignore that hover state for a moment and look at the color of the text. So to adjust that upon our state selection, if we go to call out values, and then in our default state, we want that to be uh, matching our blue. So let's find a light blue we're comfortable with. And then in our selected state, we want that to be a darker blue. So once again, if we find a darker blue than that one, we have that. So if we look at our visual now, when we change our states, the colors are changing. And I think for the hover, actually, the color of the button should change as well. So let's go to our call out values, hover, and then let's make that a dark blue as well. So when we hover, it's very obvious that we're making a selection. So that's essentially the third style done. Whilst well, so I didn't show how to actually create that hover state in the middle, but given what I did show, it should make sense in terms of how you adjust the hover state and then apply that image to the fill. That's three ways of styling your list slices. If this video was useful, feel free to like and subscribe. It's the Power BI guy and I'm checking out.